Hey guys, my name is Red Nomster, and today I'm continuing my tutorial series for Halo Infinite's new Forge mode. If you don't know, I'm the guy who built Toy Story in Halo, Zelda in Halo, as well as Halo in Halo, and a few other fun projects as well. In my last video, we learned the basics of building and scripting in Forge mode. It'll be linked in the description, and I highly recommend you check that video out if you're stumbling upon this video for the first time with very little forging experience. In this video, we'll be diving deeper into Forge's new and improved scripting feature, and we'll be focusing on object movement, as well as concepts you'll actually want in your own custom maps. Automatic sliding doors, functional elevators, and even a scripted climbing animation for things like ladders. Now, I've even gone ahead and made this world downloadable so you can explore it yourself. If you're really lazy, you can even cannibalize my various examples into prefabs to slap into your own maps. And don't forget guys, there are timestamps on this video if you want to see a specific design, but keep in mind this is a rather linear tutorial, meaning a later design may expect you to have learned the simpler designs first. Whether you know how to script or not, this tutorial should have you covered. First, a double slide sliding door. Something like this was highly requested in my last tutorial where I showed how to make a single rotating door. As you can see, each design I've made has its own script brain floating above it. Now this isn't necessary, but it makes it easier to separate designs visually for the tutorial. Step 1, select the invisible switch we've already placed. If you don't know how to place an invisible switch, aha, gotcha, you'll need to watch my previous tutorial for the basics. With the invisible switch selected, open the script brain and add an object reference for that invisible switch. Next, select one of the two doors you want to slide open. Make sure both are set to dynamic, because only dynamic objects can be referenced in a script brain. Thereafter, add an object reference for both, keeping in mind which door is left and which is right. Now of course, what we're trying to do with these objects is to move them to open the door, so we'll need a move object transform node. Now this isn't the only way to move an object, but it is the simplest in my opinion. And don't forget, the invisible switch is activating this door, so we'll need an on object interacted node as well. Connect the two, and then connect the left door to the object slot on the move object to transform node, as that's the object we want to move. Step two, add an object reference for the destination object. In my build, this green door is going to slide to the position of this red block, aka the destination object. The destination object acts as coordinates for the green door to move to. Now connect the destination object to the correlating slot on the move object to transform node. Step three, adjust the speed of the door's movement by selecting the node and navigating to the second tab, node properties. Now, with this simple script, we've managed to create half of a graphically horrendous door. <laughs> but if you want the two doors to slide simultaneously, you'll need to create two separate scripts. Here, the top script is for the left door, the bottom script is for the right. And as you can see, with just a handful of nodes, you can create a double door. Another popular request from my last video is a door that opens automatically, no switches required. So let's build one. Once again, reference the door as well as the object you want the door to move to. Here, I'm moving the door downwards under the map as opposed to sideways for a more compact design. I've also renamed these objects, which isn't necessary, but definitely helps when you're trying to remember what's what in the script brain. Objects can be renamed in object properties when an object is selected. Now for the interesting part. How do we automatically detect if a player is approaching a door? Place a pointer, though this could be any object you choose. Pointers can be found in the scripting section of the object browser, and are invisible during normal gameplay, so they're pretty much the perfect object for this scenario. Select the pointer, go to Object Properties, and scroll down to Boundary. Adjust this boundary to create an area big enough to fit your player on either side of the door. Add an object reference for this pointer as well. I'm also going to rename the pointer to Detector, which again just helps me personally identify what's what in the script brain. Now for a new node, On Object Entered Area as well as on object exited area. But as you can see, it's not quite that simple. You can't just connect the detector object to the area monitor slot. First, you have to declare that the detector object is an area monitor. So the game knows that you're trying to use said object to, well, monitor the area. Go to variables basic, select area monitor, and connect the two nodes like this. Now, our object has been turned into an area monitor. Whee! Similar to our previous door design, we want the successful output of this to move the door. But as you can see, that logic alone poses a problem, and the door opens immediately whether or not our player even enters the area. See, we never actually told the script that the object entering the area needed to be a player, so the other objects making up the door are being considered instead. To fix this, place a git is player node and connect it like so. Next, place a branch node, which allows us to let the game decide if something is true or false. 
Now we actually need to backtrack for just a moment to clear the connection on this pin, because the script needs to know whether this is true or false beforehand. With those nodes shuffled around, we're ready to connect the if true output to the move object node. This simple logic reads, if and only if a player enters the area, move the door. And as you can see, without pressing a switch, the door opens when we approach it. But what good is an automatic door if it doesn't automatically close behind you? So let's head back into the script brain, copy paste a few of these nodes, and connect them to the on object exited area node. Again, we need to specify whether or not the exiting object is a player. And finally, we need to close the door by moving it back to... Oh, wait. Yes, there's nothing for the door to move back to. You may have noticed that our first door design had the same exact problem, and here is a super simple way to solve that problem for both designs. Just like our pointer that's invisible during gameplay and acting as an area monitor, they can also be used as an invisible object reference. Simply copy the coordinates from the closed state of the door, and paste them into the coordinates of the new pointer we just placed. Now don't forget, you'll need to do this for the position and rotational coordinates. If done correctly, you should have a dummy pointer object that can be referenced for the destination of our closing door. The end result will open the door automatically when the player approaches, and close the door automatically when the player leaves. So, let's get away from doors for a bit and use the logic we've learned so far to make a different interactive mechanic. How about an elevator? Like before, add a reference to the switch. In this case, we're going to be using two switches, one at the top and one at the bottom, so add a reference for both. And of course, don't forget to add a reference for the elevator itself. Add a move to object transform node, connecting it to the switch, and connect your elevator object to the object slot of said node. Next, just like I referenced our dummy pointer object from the previous door design, I've gone ahead and placed a dummy pointer for the lower and upper destinations of our elevator object. We'll need to add an object reference for both of these two. After that, connect the uppermost dummy object to the destination object for this portion of the script, and go ahead and test out some timing and movement curves for your elevator. As you can see, the elevator looks jank as hell when you're stepping on it, but we'll see what we can do about that at the end. For now, repeat the process for the downwards version of this elevator, only this time reference the switch at the top of the elevator rather than the one at the bottom, and use the lowermost dummy pointer as the destination object for the move object to transform node. As you can see, we now have an elevator that goes up and down, quite terribly I might add. <laughs> to fix the movement on the upwards script, change the duration to a larger number and make the curve linear. This makes it buttery smooth, albeit slower. Now unfortunately, for a design this simple, the downwards elevator will always be jank because it deals with the added variable of gravity, as well as terminal velocity and whatnot, but that doesn't matter. Perhaps in a future tutorial I can look into making a seamless downwards elevator, but don't let the jankiness stop you from adding elevators to your maps now. Now there's also another common way to reach high ground in video games, and that is by using ladders. And we can script those too. Now you may have seen them in some of my maps that I've already built in the leaked build of Forge, and the end of my Zelda and Halo video even shows how I added some sound effects the ladder if you're interested, as well as a horizontal version that simulates crawling. Step 1 for this simple design is like most designs before, referencing an invisible switch. Step 2 is placing various dummy pointers to act as keyframes for the player's climbing animation. I've done so already, as you can see here, and I've even renamed them to ladder. Step 3, reference each pointer in the script and add a move object to transform node for each. Connect the activating player slot from the on object interacted node to each move object to transform node like so. That's right, just like dynamic blocks, the player counts as an object too, and can be moved around using scripting. Now have each move object to transform node connect to the next, and connect the next highest dummy pointer on your scripted ladder to the next move object to transform node in the sequence until you have no pointers left. Again, I renamed the pointers to ladder in this node graph. This simple logic leaves us with an interactable ladder that carries the player from the bottom to the top. But that's unfortunately all the time I had for this tutorial, guys. I wanted to do more, but these designs should act as a good foundation for you to make your own designs. And again, I've published this world for you to test out these designs for yourself, and to investigate the scripts in more detail if you can't quite figure it out from the video. A link to the download for this world will be in the description. Next tutorial, I plan on scripting custom game mechanics like weapon combining and player traits, as well as how to make custom game types, as both of those are pretty important for making your own maps too. If you have any questions about this tutorial, feel free to leave a comment, I'll help you out. Happy forging everybody, I'll catch you in the next video. Peace.